see, Victor? The bats are able to get around just fine. Their sonar system is quite sophisticated. Let's take a closer look. When they're flying, bats produce sound waves. Hmm. I don't hear anything. That's because the frequency of the sound waves is too high for us to hear. But the bats can hear them, and when these sounds hit something, like this tree, they bounce back to the bat's ears. Oh, like my ball bounces back to me when I throw it. That's right. From the sounds, the bat can tell what lies ahead, how far away it is, and how big or small it is. It takes a bat less than a thousandth of a second to produce the sound waves and analyze their echo. Don't they get confused by other bat sound waves? <laughs> No, each bat can recognize its own cry. Bats also use their sonar to hunt. The bat's sonar can even penetrate shallow water, which means they can catch small fish. Some species of butterfly have found a way to avoid being caught by bats. When they hear the bat's sounds, they fold their wings and play dead. Other species produce their own sound waves to jam those made by bats. Pretty, Pretty sneaky, sneaky, huh? You better brush your teeth before all those sweets give you cavities. Cavities? What are cavities? Cavities are holes in your teeth. Ew! Where do they come from? I'll show you. Open up, Scopo. Your teeth are valuable tools, and taking good care of them is essential. A tooth is made up of two parts, the crown and the root. The crown is the part you can see. It's covered with enamel, which protects the tooth. Enamel is the hardest substance in the entire human body. In fact, it's one of the hardest substances found in nature. The layer below the enamel is the dentine. It also protects the tooth, although it's not as hard as the enamel. It acts as a cushion against shocks. And what's that? Well, that's the pulp. It contains nerves and blood vessels. So it's the part of our teeth that feels pain, hot, and cold. Hey! That kind of looks like a tree root. That part of the tooth is called the root. It's attached to the gum. But all this talk about teeth has made me hungry. Well, then this is a perfect opportunity to see teeth in action. Come on, Victor. Whoa. This is like being in a cave. <laughs> hey, Uncle Scribble's mouth is flooding! That's saliva. It helps us digest food and protect our teeth. Scribble, <laughs> oh, stop eating! Now, take a look through these. It all begins with bacteria. You taught me about bacteria. They can make you sick. Sometimes, but bacteria are everywhere. In our mouths, in the food we eat. Now, by themselves, the bacteria in our mouths aren't usually a problem. You see, like any living beings, bacteria need food to survive. I bet they eat the food that sticks to our teeth. You're right. Then the bacteria form a yellow film called dental plaque. Is dental plaque dangerous? It sure is. It digests sugar and other substances found in food and turns them into lactic acid, a very powerful acid that dissolves the enamel and eats into the dentine. That's bad. Yes, it is. It's the reason for tooth decay. Then the bacteria settle into the cavity and take over the digging. And when they reach the pulp's nerve, the nerve sends a distress signal to the brain. That's what triggers a toothache. That's horrible. Scopo, I've just shown Victor what can happen to your teeth. 
So now it's up to you to show him how to keep it from happening. Hurry up, Uncle Scopo. Those bacteria look hungry. When you brush your teeth properly, you remove plaque and bacteria. And you remove the food that could feed any bacteria that might remain. Good work, Scopo. Mm, thanks. I feel minty fresh now. Ready for some more cake, Uncle Scopo? Oh! Well, I guess that's another way to prevent cavities. Who has all the answers about the sun and moon and stars? That would be Psycho and Magic. Who can tell us all about the atmosphere and Mars? That would be Psycho and Magic. Pick a spot in outer space, they've been all around the place. Psycho and Magic, here they come. <laughs> Our snowman is gonna catch cold. He's not the only one. <laughs> uh, I've had enough of winter. I'm ready for summer. First, you'll have to go through spring. My favorite season. Why are there seasons, Grandpa? Ah, the best place to answer that is from space. You know, Victor, different parts of the world don't have the same seasons at the same time. Why not? I'll show you. The Earth orbits around the Sun, completing a large circle in 365 days. Wow! That is a long time. Eh, it's only a year. And this is the Earth's axis. Yeah! Grandma taught me about that. It's an imaginary line crossing the Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole. And the Earth spins around it. Hmm. Very good. I bet she also explained that the axis is tilted in relation to the sun. Like so. That means that if I pick any place on the Earth, the distance between this place and the sun changes as the Earth makes its orbit. So, if it's nearer the sun, does it get hotter? It sure does. That's summertime. And the living is easy. And as this place moves away from the sun, it becomes colder. Winter! Right! I'm gonna take advantage of all this sun. Now, imagine a line running across the middle of the Earth. The equator! Ah, Grandma again. Ah, good for her. The halves of the Earth on either side of the equator are called hemispheres. When it's hot in the hemisphere, tilted towards the sun... It's cold in the other one. When it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, where we live, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere, because that's when it's furthest from the sun. Is that why days are longer in the summer? Yes, and the days get shorter as our hemisphere tilts away from the sun. And it gets colder. <laughs> but summer and winter aren't the only two seasons. There's also spring and fall. Yes, true enough, Victor. Since it takes the Earth one whole year to go once around the sun, the weather and the heat change slowly. But there are some places on Earth where there aren't any seasons at all. Where, Grandpa? The Amazon rainforest, for example. Or anywhere else that's along the equator. The sun's rays nearly always shine straight down along the equator, so it's hot all year round. And days are pretty much the same length. <laughs> of course, there's a reason it's called a rainforest. I think maybe I like changing seasons after all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Victor, what'd you learn today? Oh, tons of neat stuff. I learned that fog is like a cloud with water inside, and that it hovers near the ground. I learned that the way to maneuver a helicopter is by changing the angle of the blades. I also learned that bats have really bad eyesight, but they have a sonar system to find stuff. The bat's sonar can even penetrate shallow water, which means they can catch small fish. I learned that each tooth has enamel, dentine, pulp, nerves, and roots. And I learned that at the equator, the sun's rays shine straight down so that each day lasts about the same length of time as the next one. Sounds like a pretty big day. 
It was, but I still have plenty of questions left for next time.